Kia ora internet, this is yet another video from our Waimati trip, we did a lot of exploring while we were down there. One of the places we explored was up the Waitaki Valley. The Waitaki is a river just south of Waimati and it kind of marks the boundary between Canterbury and Otago. Like a lot of the big South Island rivers, there's only a couple of bridges across it. You either cross it on State Highway 1 down by the sea, or you go way up the valley to cross it up in the mountains. We did have an aim in mind going up the valley, but that's the subject of another video. This one is just some random places we visit along the way. the reasons Littleton Witch and I make good travelling companions is we both have the same approach to travelling. We get easily distracted by shiny things along the way and there's nothing we like better than an interesting sign. We'll always stop and see what it is. So this video is just a random collection of some of those places we stopped. So we're just outside Waimate and we're not here to look at the lambs, even though they are very cute and very spring-like. This is Kapua Moor, which is where a large collection of moor bones were found. And looking at the landscape, this was most definitely a swamp before it was turned into farmland. So it's not surprising really that that's where they found the moor bones, because they very often found in egg swamps. The more would get trapped in the swamps and die. But the lambs are cute. <laughs> this is the Waihau Forks Hotel, famous for a very old bottle of beer. The story goes that a young local farmer left his beer on the bar before he went off to war, saying he'd be back for it later. Unfortunately, he never came home. But the pub still has his beer waiting for him more than 80 years later. The pub was closed when we got there, but apparently there's a display case inside where you can still see Ted's bottle waiting for him to come home. Yeah, I did mention that we just stop whenever we see an interesting sign. This one turned out to be for a cob cottage which was built in the 1880s and is now a Category 1 historic place. It had some furnishings inside, so it looks like it might sometimes be open to the public, but we couldn't see any signs to find out when. I don't know if this happens in other countries, but it always seems such a quintessentially Kiwi thing to me. A herd of sheep being mustered along a state highway. You know, this is like a main road in New Zealand terms. We even have a section of the road code which tells you how to cope when you come across a herd of sheep on a state highway and what you should do, which is drive very slowly and follow the instructions of the farmer. I wish this sound had recorded on this section because the sound of being in the middle of a herd of sheep is quite impressive if you haven't experienced it before. The Waitaki River is far from being the largest of the big South Island braided rivers. But even up here near Kurao, it's still a very wide river. The bridge here is quite new. Up until 2014, you crossed the river at Kurao on a 130-year-old single-lane wooden bridge. They've left a section of the old bridge beside the river as a monument. to fame 
claim is that it's the first place in the world to have had social security. I didn't know this, but apparently the first social security scheme was set up there in the 1920s for families of workers on the hydro dams which were being built further up the valley. It's also the birthplace of all black Richie McCaw, something they're so proud of they want to build a statue to him. But most people just know Kura as a great place to stop for an ice cream. So it turns out Duntroon has a very amusing toilet block.